Fun fact, in Celeste, the first button you press says climb. Climbing is one of Madeline's most important abilities along with jumping and dashing. But what if we tried getting to the top of Celeste Mountain without climbing? So let's find out, can you beat Celeste without climbing? Now of course, what substitutes as a climb? I would say that it would be pressing the climb button, but we know for a fact that it's impossible to beat the game by doing that. Why? Well, in the fifth chapter of the game, we need to take Theo and bring him to the end of the chapter. And the button you use to pick him up is the climb button. And there's no other way to make him budge. Even if we access the B-side earlier in the level that would let us alternatively complete a harder version of that chapter to continue, Theo would still be there stopping us from progressing. So, what do you suppose we do? Well, if you played Celeste enough to have completed every C-side, an extra difficult version of each chapter, you will unlock the ability to turn on Variant Mode. This mode allows you to do a bunch of cool things, like make the walls and floors have less friction, turn yourself into the antagonist, and not let you grab. So what differences does the no grab variant have against not pressing the button? Well, of course, you are able to grab Theo, but there's something else that pressing the grab button does with this variant can also do. Certain blocks or platforms can activate after either standing on them or grabbing onto the sides of them. This includes the city zip blocks, the ridge flying blocks, the falling blocks, and crumble platforms. If you press the grab button while on the sides of these blocks, even though you won't be holding onto them, they will still activate and serve their purpose. This not only makes a ton of screens a lot easier, but this actually lets you progress through a room in the summit. So I guess in technical terms, this would be, can you beat Celeste with the no grabbing variant on? I think that's all I need to clarify, let's start. So, we start off in the prologue, and obviously it's a very easy complete- Oh no... Well, I think that's our answer- Okay, okay guys, this is not the end of the run. We can make it over this wall. How? Well, let me show you. If you were to jump from a wall without holding a direction, Madeline goes a little higher than usual, and if you head back to the wall afterwards, you'll notice that you're a little higher than you started. Repeating this process allows you to ascend up a wall without actually grabbing onto the wall. This is called a neutral. By performing a neutral, this lets us get over this wall, along with many other walls that will impede us throughout the run. In Forsaken City, there's not too much challenging other than this difficult sequence of neutrals. It's a good thing that... I'm a neutral god. I can do this. The same goes for Old Sight. Nothing too special. Now for Celestial Resort. Things get a little bit more challenging. There's a room where you have to get on a higher ledge to get height for neutral. In another room, we can get on this platform, but not in time for these dust bunnies to drop down onto us. How do we escape in time? Let me show you. If you dash diagonally into the ground and then press the jump button before your dash ends, you will be boosted incredibly quickly in front of you and cross a large distance. To make matters even better, if you jump at a certain point, you get your boost and regain your dash at the same time, so you can follow up with another dash to get more distance. Pretty sweet, right? This is called a hyper dash. So now we can just perform a hyper dash and make it off in time. Other than a risky wall bounce, that's the gist of Celestial Resort. Now we move on to Golden Ridge, and this chapter stinks in the run. Why? Well, because of wind. If wind is pushing towards us, then we aren't able to get the distance of a neutral in to let us ascend. So in many rooms, we may not be able to perform neutrals. We go through a few precise jumps and thank the lore that we can activate these moving blocks before we get into this room. Here, you're supposed to grab onto the side of this block and guide it to our destination. But without being able to pull the block, we have to resort to doing the hyper dash from this far platform. Next, we find ourselves in a room where the wind just won't let us on this ledge, and there's no other platform anywhere near where we can perform a hyper. Is this the end? Well, before we call it quits, let's take a look at this platform. It's somewhat close to the ledge, but with the wind and distance, even if we were able to perform a hyper dash, it seems impossible. Well, let me teach you another trick. Remember how I said you need to dash diagonally into the ground to perform a hyper dash? Well, you don't have to start off on the ground. You can initiate the dash in the air, just as long as you time the jump on the ground right, you will get the boost. When you perform a hyper dash starting off in the air, this is called a wave dash. Unlike hyper dashes, wave dashes don't restrict you with a large amount of ground. All it takes is a small part of the ground to land on. 
So, with this knowledge, what can we do? Well, we can get on top of this platform, do a small hop, and perform a wave dash. Whoa, 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 you, you saw that, right? Madeline just hopped off midair. What happened? Well, this is a coyote jump. When you walk off a ledge, you get five frames to jump anyways to catch yourself. And it just so happens that if you do a boost with a coyote jump, you'll go a tad farther. With all this in mind, we perform a wave dash and use our extra dash to make it onto this ledge without grabbing. I will mind you that this is incredibly close to not possible. And this move is frame and pixel perfect. Oh, phew. Now we can take a breather. Or at least I wish we could, because we seem to be stuck once again on the very next room. In this room, we are supposed to grab and jump ourselves over the stick, but with the inability to even neutral, this is not possible. Can we go under the stick? Well, it seems like we just don't have the height to make it around the stick without getting poked. If only there was a way to squeeze under the spikes. Well, there's still hope! Let me introduce you to yet another move. News for Atu, hit the lights please. Thank you. These are the hitboxes of Madeline. Nifty, huh? When she crouches, her hitbox is smaller and can fit in smaller places. Unfortunately, we can't keep this during a dash. Or can we? Introducing Demo Dashes. When you dash downwards, your hitbox is the same as if you are crouching. If we were to initiate a downward dash and within 5 frames change the direction we wanted to go, we would dash in that new direction, but keep the old hitbox of the downward dash. So essentially, we can now do a dash that lets us squeeze through smaller places with a smaller hitbox. But will a demo dash be enough to make it around the stick? The answer is yes! After performing the most optimal demo dash under the spikes, timing it so that we uncrouch once we make it past the stick, and let the wind carry us back to the other side of the stick, we can now manage to jump from the other side of the stick and make it through the room. In another upcoming room, we once again have to perform an insanely precise wave dash. When will it give us a break? Well, not now, since it started giving us extra strong wind. In this room, we can't just climb up this wall, and doing a hyper dash from the platform just doesn't give us the height we need. So, what's our next move? I'll show you our next move, and it's called a super dash. A super dash is very alike to a hyper dash, but in that instead of dashing diagonally, we dash horizontally. With this, our boost we get does not go as far, but it brings us higher. By performing a super dash on this platform instead of a hyper, it gives us the height that we need to reach the ledge. After this, other than some 200 IQ snowball manipulation, we've reached the end of this wretched chapter without climbing. And now we've reached the mirror temple, and there's surprisingly not much of a challenge here other than a few precise movements here and there, so I guess this gives me a chance to show off a skip I do in this chapter. In this skip, we're trying to get from here to here. How do we do that, since the spikes are too high for us to even super dash from? Well, there's a way to give us some room to get the height of a boost over the spikes. When doing a hyper super dash, if we were to point Madeline in the opposite direction of the dash when she jumps, she will turn around and perform the dash in an opposite direction. So with this technique, we can perform a reverse super dash and give ourselves the room and height we need to make the boost over these spikes and dash on the ledge. Uh, oh yeah, don't forget the neutral. With everything that we know, reflection is easy peasy, there's not much I can really show off that's too impressive. And now we've reached the summit, where many of the rooms are going to be more vertical, which is not a good sign. Many segments seem quite simple and doable now that we've learned so much during the journey. Good job, Madeline. And to ruin the fun, we have to revisit Golden Ridge components. But luckily, the only dumb stuff is a demo dash to squeeze under this wall. And after Golden Ridge comes Mirror Temple, and we just have to make a tight squeeze between these spikes, and we're off to head to the summit section. Well, there, there's this room, and uh, it's a really big roadblock for us. So, let's go over this room in detail, specifically this point, the point that's impeding our progress. What we are supposed to do is dash onto this wall, climb it up, and dash onto this moving block that zips to one end whenever we perform a dash. Once we climb onto it, we're supposed to wait it out as this block slowly recedes and carries us to this far spring that lets us continue. Now, let's take a look at this through the eyes of us, who are not allowed to grab. We are not able to climb this left wall very quickly, but luckily we're able to perform neutrals here. Now, we could try dashing onto the side of this block, but there would be no point as it can't carry us back to the spring. 
We can't slide on or over the block because the block is too close to these spikes and it won't even get there by the time it zips back to us. So is this the end of the run? Well, let's think smart about this. This room is required to be completed if we want to reach the end of this chapter, but we don't have to do it on this side. What I mean by this is that another technical way for us to complete this is to do the B side of the chapter, which we can unlock in the main side before we get stuck. So our next question is if we can beat the Summit B side without climbing. The short and honestly unsurprising answer is no. There are tons of points in the Summit B-side in which there's undoubtedly no possible way of progressing without grabbing onto the wall. I guess I should have expected such a thing from a literal harder version of the chapter. So with the B-sides not being an option and this room literally slapping us in the face, the question I'm sure you're all asking is, is this the end of the run and where the conclusion sets? It's hard for me to say it, but there's no doubt in my mind that the answer is NOPE! You heard me right, it does not end here, I'm not letting it happen. Spoiler alert, this room in Summit A-side is possible without grabbing. You may be thinking that I have a card up my sleeve that I've yet to show you guys, but the cards I'm pulling are all the cards that I've already shown you. To reiterate, the way I'm going to beat this room uses a combination of every trick that I've taught you in this video. Are you ready for the answer? I'm gonna need to take a deep breath for this one, but here we go. On this platform, we need to perform a reverse hyperdash on the very edge and jump back to the left. We aim ourselves downwards and get back on the platform and do a coyote jump on the very edge. This will give us the maximum amount of speed that we'll need. We do an up left dash on the peak of our jump and start doing neutrals, and these neutrals have to be perfect and swift. Why? Well, we need to make sure that when we dash towards the block that the block is close to us as possible. So the farther we go, the less time the block has to recede. We perform three frame-perfect neutrals and jump out towards the block and do a demo dash. This demo dash is so that we can squeeze ourselves in between the block and the spikes. And since we've ensured that the block is as close to us as possible, by the time our demo dash is done, we are on top of the block and can hold down to crouch. This makes sure we don't get back up and bonk our heads on the spikes. With the momentum of the dash, we slide over the block and make it to the other side where we have a dash from standing on the block and dash away to victory. I think you guys know this well enough, but this move is crazily insane. If you actually thought I did that move, then you must be out of your mind. What I did is I used a tool assisted superplay, or TAS for short. This program lets me manually input what buttons I want the game to press and for how long. This lets me perfectly tell it what I want Madeline to do so that I can do crazy things like this. I'll let you guys know this now, this room is the only room in the run where I needed to use the task. Every other move I've done myself without the help of the task. Now let's not celebrate yet. This is not the end of the summit. We've still got quite a few tricky screens ahead of us. In this room, we're supposed to climb between the spikes and we don't have a dash to get through without neutral. So what's our options? Well, it's actually possible to conserve a dash by only doing a single demo dash to get around the block. So then we can use our extra dash to squeeze through. In this later room, we're supposed to climb behind these spikes and use our last dash to get to Feather. Fortunately for us, we can once again conserve a dash to use for avoiding having to climb. And here we are at the last room of the entire game. And of course, this has to have a challenge for us. With two places where we are supposed to climb, how do we avoid both with so little dashes to work with? Well, there is a dash that we can save by letting this crystal recharge and then getting close enough to it to do a dash through and regain our dashes along with getting enough length to reach the wall. With this extra dash, we can dash through the spikes and do a wall bounce so that we get the distance to dash and jump around these final spikes. And from there, we have finally made it to the top of the mountain, meaning that it is in fact possible to beat Celeste without climbing. As much as this challenge looked extremely difficult, I had a lot of fun playing Celeste with a whole new set of rules. There's still a possibility that some of these tricks could be shown to be done even easier and more efficiently and maybe even get to the point where people start speedrunning it. But let's not give our hopes up. Also, I'll be honest, I knew this was possible for years. How? Well, because of this amazing video by Spirialis. He ran the game by only doing two climbs, and both of those climbs were for activating blocks that needed to be activated from the side. This was done because the variant mode wasn't introduced at the time. 
this guy went through really tough dedication. This run is 4 hours and 53 minutes long, and he spent 2 hours and 40 minutes of it all in that insanely hard room in the summit. Do you believe me when I say it's incredibly difficult now? Another big thanks I want to give is to Marco Sanchez, a Celeste mapper, for making this green screen map for me. Well, if I missed anything, or you have any questions, or you just want to ask me out for a late Valentine's, let me know in the comments below. But other than that, that's all I have for you guys. Run along now.